Good to see all of you, uh, if uh, virtual. Um, I'm going to talk about endoscopic spine surgery again in the same vein, in fact, uh, that Paul kind of led off in, in terms of evolution of technique. Um, you know, what we want to start to look at is, is, you know, can we get even, you know, sort of less invasive, so to speak, right? And we'll talk about why endoscopic surgery seems to be more popular uh, outside of the U.S. And, and largely my opinion, but uh, taken from literature that's out there, so... So here are my disclosures. Um, I, I kind of frame it as three sort of simple concepts, right? Um, uh, there are lots of things that we don't know, um, and that's things like facts and, and data. Uh, there are lots of things that we don't understand, like what don't we get about this, and, and, and there are things that we just don't care about. And when I say we, um, I'm not just talking about surgeons, I'm talking about hospitals and even industry, and I'll get into that a bit. So starting off, what don't we know? Well, many of us, and myself included, and, and I hope you can stick around for the uh, session at the end, uh, where I share a little bit of my journey because I, I have just started doing endoscopic surgery. Um, to be honest with you, all I thought about endoscopic surgery was it's just surgery in the tube with a little gun looking thing. Um, and this is actually a paper I would really recommend, you know, if you're interested in endoscopic surgery, read this paper. Um, it's from the AO Spine Group, our, our own, uh, you know, Jin Sung uh, Luke Kim is uh, the senior author on this. And really, when we talk about endoscopic surgery, we're really kind of focused on full endoscopic technology and largely in the lumbar spine. I wouldn't get too sexy or cute trying to do it in the cervical thoracic spine. Um, and this is probably most of what we think about is endoscopic surgery. Now, there's also metrics tube surgery, which you know, they define as endoscopic assisted, and then also endoscopic assisted, which uh, is another way I started getting into it, was doing unilateral biportal surgery. Um, but really, you know, there's a massive alphabet soup in there and so, but as long as you understand really what categories different techniques and procedures fall into, you'll at least have a good framework uh, and where to get started when you do talk about endoscopic surgery. Um, when I first started, I just literally Googled, um, how do I get trained to do endoscopic surgery? Like it was literally, you know, that organic, so to speak. And here are just two pages um, from different websites that I found. And, you know, if you kind of look through and read the, you know, read what's going on, you're like, well, geez, when am I going to make it to Copenhagen or to Germany? And, 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 and so it's hard to know really what is a good um, jumping off point. Well, uh, luckily, as I would continue to search, um, it, it turns out NAS actually now is offering a course that I really highly recommend you go to. It's co-sponsored by NAS and Comis. Um, and really my first, you know, aha moment was, oh, wait a sec, NAS is really interested in this, right? And I do congratulate NAS for, for you know, putting this on because it tells me, number one, NAS is interested in it and the membership of NAS is interested in it. And again, this speaks to the fact that this is really starting to grow um, uh, and it's really starting to grab people's attention. So what don't, what didn't I or what don't I understand about endoscopic spine surgery? Well, we are all comfortable and, and certainly for those of you who are RVU based, even more comfortable on, you know, our, our, your work um, value, right? In other words, we put in a certain amount of input and we get output output and good patient outcomes in terms of how many micro discs you can do in a day, you know, to be honest with you, how much we get paid after X number of work. And endoscopic surgery certainly feels like there's a lot more input. And we think, well, if we're just doing the same operation, you know, where's, you know, what, you know, what's in it for me. Um, and of course, it's really all about where do you feel like you can do the greatest impact for your patients. Um, and so, you know, there is a CPT code now, uh, 62380, endoscopic decompression of neural elements and or excision of herniator intervertebral disc. You're like, great. Well, it turns out you could still submit it to your insurance company, and this is the letter they'll give back to you, saying it's investigational or not um, medically necessary. So, 
It's certainly not universally accepted. Um, NAS does have a position paper on reimbursement for endoscopic surgery. So even our own society um, has an opinion about it. Um, and our, but unfortunately, like we've seen in, you know, Axilif and other procedures, insurance co companies can simply just say, well, we're not going to pay for it. And that alone becomes a real uphill challenge for us um, in terms of wider adoption. Um, the other thing that I certainly don't understand because I'm still in the middle of it is my learning curve. Uh, and if you read again, various papers and I, and I pull these three papers up because as you get into it, you know, the various papers are actually, again, talking about different endoscopic procedures. Um, the, uh, paper by Nomura up there really is, is a biportal technique, um, and, you know, endoscopic techniques. So fully endoscopic techniques which really becomes, you know, again, a challenge. And, and really, you got to just appreciate that you're doing different operations. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, don't care, right? Surgeons, them, you know, ourselves kind of say, well, you know, that's what they do in Korea. That's because they're experts in Korea. This is not something I know how to do, and I'm never going to do it, right? The hospital, of course, is, wait a sec, you want how much money to do what procedure? And they're, you know, and they're just kind of, you know, they, they, you know, they dismiss it as saying, look, we're not going to spend that much money um, to, you know, have you do microdisc that takes twice as long, right? Again, that's just not quite understanding the value to the patient. And then industry, right? So there are very little, what are, what are called sort of economic rents here um, in this industry. In other words, when, you know, you have a rep in a room that has a, a, a coat full of widgets, so to speak, screws and cages, you know, the more you put that stuff in, you know, they're, they're essentially, you know, kind of paying the rep the same amount of money, but they're making a great, great, greater deal of, uh, of revenue from the implants. You know, if you look at an endoscopic spine company, they're only making money when you're doing an operation. So um, in a way, I think, you know, there's even some industry lag that, um, that we're seeing uh, that are certainly working on it. So I think that there's, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot that we need to learn, uh, learn more about it. And again, that's incumbent upon us. We need to, to do these cases. We need to generate good data and really, uh, you know, continue to fuel our passion for it. If this is where we believe, you know, we really want to go. So uh, ultimately, you know, in terms of knowledge deficits, it's what is it exactly, right? We have to figure out and understand what it is. And most importantly, how do I train for this? You know, do you have to do hundreds? You know, do you have to go down to Arizona and spend, you know, take three weeks out of your practice and spend those full three weeks with Tony Young? Um, or can you just be a weekend warrior and get good at it? You know, there's an opportunity cost that we have to consider. And then again, our attitudes about is this, is this just something that, you know, am I just going through all this extra work um, for, you know, very little benefit. And then again, on the financial side, you know, that's, uh, you know, so many parties are involved there that, you know, we just need to get better at that and kind of figure out how that goes. Thank you.